Hello everyone and welcome to our presentation on emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence or EI is one of the most talked about types of intelligence in the IO realm or the industrial and organizational psychology realm. It's considered one of the breakthrough theories in recent history. Uh, EI has been known to have this reassuring aspect on um, leadership, career success, academic success, as well as many other aspects of both our business and our personal lives. The first element of EI is self-awareness. And self-awareness is the ability to recognize and understand your own emotions beyond just realizing that you have an emotion or you know what this emotion is. However, it's being aware of the effects of your actions, your moods, as well as your emotions on other people. Uh, these individuals also recognize their own strengths and their own limitations. They are open to new information and new experiences and learn from their interactions with others. Uh, Goldman suggests that people who possess self-awareness have a really good sense of humor. They tend to be very confident in, them, in themselves and their abilities and are aware of how other people perceive them. The next is self-regulation. In addition to being aware of your own emotions and the impact that your emotions have on others, emotional intelligence requires you to be able to regulate and manage your emotions. This doesn't mean putting your emotions on lockdown and hiding your true feelings. It simply means waiting for the right time in the right place to express these emotions. Uh, Self-regulation is all about expressing your emotions appropriately. Those who are skilled in self-regulation tend to be flexible, they tend to adapt well to change, and they're good at managing conflict and diffusing tense or difficult situations they may face. Uh, those who are skilled in self-regulation tend to be good at managing those, um, you know, self-conflicts as well, being in touch with themselves. They tend to have skills that are high in conscientiousness, and they are thoughtful in how they influence others, and they take responsibility for their own actions. The next is social skills. Uh, being able to interact well with others is another important aspect of emotional intelligence. Having strong social skills allows people to build meaningful relationships with others and develop a stronger understanding of themselves as well as others that are around them. A uh, true emotional understanding involves more than just understanding your own emotions and those of others. You also need to be able to put this information to work in your daily interactions or daily communication with others. Uh, in professional settings, managers benefit by being able to build relationships and connections with employees. So do nurses, healthcare professionals, they really benefit by being able to bond, to connect to those around them. Um, the workers also benefit from being able to develop strong rapport with leaders as well as their coworkers. And important social skills include active listening, verbal communication skills, as well as nonverbal communication skills, leadership, as well as being persuasive. The next uh, topic is empathy. Now, this is the ability to understand how others are feeling. It is absolutely critical for emotional intelligence for you to have empathy. Um, it involves more than just being able to recognize an emotional state of someone else. It also involves responses to people based on the information that you've received. Uh, when you sense that someone is feeling sad or even hopeless, how do you respond? You might treat them with extra care, extra concern, or you might make an effort to sort of lift their spirits up. 
Uh, being empathetic also allows you to understand the power dynamics that often influence social relationships, especially in a workplace setting. Uh, this is important for guiding your interactions with different people you encounter each and every day. These components in this area are able to really sense who possesses power in different relationships. They understand these focuses and how they influence feelings and behaviors. And because of this, they can accurately interpret different situations that hinder on these sort of power dynamics. The last is motivation. Uh, Instringent motivation is an important emotional intelligence skill. People who are emotionally intelligent are motivated uh, by things that are beyond these external rewards. Uh, so they're not looking for fame, money, recognition, or you know, being told they're the best. Instead, they have a passion to fulfill their own inner needs and their inner goals. Uh, they seek internal rewards. Um, they experience flow from being totally in tune with an activity and pursue peak experiences. Uh, those who are really competent in this area tend to be action oriented. They set goals, have a high need for achievement, and are always looking for ways to do better and be better. They also tend to be very committed and are very good at taking an initiative. There's two main theories in um, emotional intelligence. The first is the Goleman theory, and the second is the Meyer-Salvi theory. Uh, Meyer and Salvi see EI as the capability to notice, fully grasp, hope, and use emotions to think clearly. Where Goleman's theory of EI identified several abilities associated with EI, and that is understanding one's emotions, managing one's emotions, recognizing others' emotions, managing relationships effectively. Therefore, elements of EI can be summarized as what we just covered, empathy, self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, and social skills. However, the most widely used definition in literature was the one that was created by Goleman. In the past, emotions were not viewed the same as they are now. Emotions were viewed as an inferior reaction that really lowered how people saw your intelligence level. Having an emotional reaction was seen as unintelligent. Uh, emotional uh, emotions have been seen as poor reactions that incite negative results. These views quickly fell with Darwin in the studies that were produced after. Currently, emotions are seen as positive reactions that can produce positive results and are now seen as an evolutionary advantage. These are a few theorists who, res who are responsible for this view change from seeing emotional, you know, issues, things like that. They saw it as just negativity, just things we shouldn't do. And now they're viewed as a type of intelligence. Uh, Thorndike was an American psychologist who was credited with creating social intelligence. Uh, Thorndike believed there was three main types of intelligence, abstract, mechanical, and social intelligence. Uh, Thorndike further researched these three types of intelligence and realized that there was a plethora of research done for abstract and mechanical intelligences, but hardly any research around social intelligence. Uh, Thorndike then came up with a definition of social intelligence, and it's the ability to act wisely in human relations. Uh, Dr. Howard Gardner believed that there is more than one type of intelligence. Uh, Gardner developed the theory of multiple intelligences. Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence believed that traditional intelligence, so IQ and IQ testing, is just incomplete and very limiting. 
Uh, Gardner believed that there are seven types of intelligence that make up a range of human capabilities. Those seven types are musical, verbal, logical, body, per interpersonal, and interpersonal. Goleman's theory of EI identified several abilities associated with EI. Understanding one's emotions, motivating them, motivating oneself, managing emotions, recognizing others' emotions, and managing relations effectively. Therefore, the elements of EI can be summarized, like we talked about before, empathy, self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, and social skills. Beyond getting you hired, being able to manage your emotions and the emotions of others could really get you ahead in your career, but also in life in general. Think back to the last time you got angry at work and said something you ended up regretting. We've all been there. Uh, maybe you got so upset about something you felt like you couldn't work anymore. Don't worry, this happens to all of us. The trick is to recognize and manage those emotions, whether they're coming from you or from someone else. Some of the most successful people around you are probably those that are very emotionally intelligent. So take note, as the idea of EI has caught up in recent years, some employers have started instituting emotional intelligence test is part of their hiring process. They believe the more in emotionally intelligent people they have, the more, you know, better your, your office will be, the stronger your employees will be, the stronger your business will be. Some key benefits to EI, first and foremost, leadership. Emotional intelligence allows you to be a more effective leader. It impacts your communication. Understanding how others are feeling allows you to communicate with them better. Uh, Self-knowledge, being more aware of what you're feeling allows you to understand yourself on a deeper level. Self-control, being aware of your emotions allows you to develop your self-control abilities. As well as stress management. Managing your emotions effectively allows you greater control of your stress as well as conflict that goes on around you. The idea of EQ or emotional intelligence has caught on in recent years. Some employers, like we talked about, have started um, instituting EI or EQ testing as part of their hiring process as they believe more emotionally intelligent people make better workers. L'Oreal is one of them. L'Oreal Cosmetics selected sales personnel based on one thing, and that was their EI competencies, and compared their performance to sales professionals selected through the traditional hiring process. The EI group sold an average of $91,370 more than those that were hired through traditional hiring processes. The net increase for L'Oreal was more than $2.5 million. Their retention improved, their attrition improved by more than 60%. So employees stayed, they were happier, and the company made more money. The last thing I'd like to talk about is an interesting use of EI. Uh, Ted Bundy was the master of emotional intelligence. He used empathy to isolate his victims. One, at one point, he used a, faked, a fake cast on his arm to elicit empathy from women. He had this broken arm. They saw the broken arm. They felt bad for him. Uh, sociopaths, which we have, you know, he, Ted Bundy as, do not experience emotion the way that the rest of us do, but they do understand empathy. They do understand emotion. They just don't feel it themselves, and they become exceedingly uh, inept at using emotional intelligence to manipulate the behaviors of others. The more you understand emotion, the more you can manipulate. You can sort of you know, make people do the things that at the end they may not want to do. And Ted Bundy was a master of that. He had a very low 
um, emotion when it comes to feeling and thoughts, things like that was not well, but his emotional intelligence tested very, very high. He was aware of emotions um, for those around him, but not necessarily that of his own. Thank you guys so much.